So we're going to look at L of Y double prime. So that is integral 0 to infinity <coughs> E negative SX Y double prime DX. So let's not think too hard because things are already tricky enough. So I'm going to do the same integration by parts, except just take the y double prime dx. So that'll be our dv. So it's basically the exact steps we did above, just kind of shifting a little bit. So u e to the negative sx dv y double prime dx. So we got regular v is now y prime. And du is negative s e negative s x. So now we're going to make the u sub. So it's u v. So it's y prime e negative s x minus. We're going to get a second plus or a second minus. So it'll be positive integral s e negative x or e negative s x. And then dv turns into, oh, I need an extra dx there. So now it's y prime dx. I think I subbed everything incorrect. Basically, it's what we got in the upper right corner, except the y prime is where y used to be. So basically, the derivative on y is going up one. <coughs> All right, and what we're looking at, I'll circle in yellow. Where do you see what I just put this box around? What is that equal to? K equals one. So that's basically our k equals one case right there. That's L of y prime. So I'm going to make that substitution. So this is y prime e negative sx plus s. L Y prime. Did not go far enough before. <clears throat> so I think we need to evaluate the antiderivative. So let's go ahead and actually evaluate these. <clears throat> so I'll shift markers over to blue while we do this. So we'll leave this one alone. We'll do just <coughs> the next one. All right, so one thing I left out of here that was pretty important, you still have endpoints on your uh, UV part of your uh, integration by part. So that's UV plus uh, VD. Oh, yeah, VDU. But you still keep your zero infinity endpoints. So let's go ahead and plug those in. Uh, we're only going to plug them into the, we don't know what y is right here, so I can't really plug them in there. However, we are going to evaluate the first one right here. Are these x or are these y or are these s endpoints? So these are x endpoints because we took a dx antiderivative. So these are x equals x equals. <coughs> so we're going to get y times, so we got e to the negative s times infinity minus, you should be putting limits in here. I'm just skipping that step because there's so many things we have to do. So I'm just kind of skipping that uh, limit step. 
and then e to the 0. I think we said that last one was s l of y. Alright, so what is e? So s is going to be uh, more greater than 0. So what's e to the negative infinity power? Zero. So that's going to be 0 right there. And then e to the 0 power is 1. So we have <coughs> y times 0 minus 1 plus s L of y, which is negative y plus s l of y. Oh, y is a function of x. Wow, that was all right. So y is a function of x. You do have to plug in. y is a function of x, so we do need to plug in the endpoints for y. So this should go y of 0, oop, y of infinity, e negative s times infinity minus y of 0 times e of 0. y is a function of x, so you have to plug in the x value into the y function. All right, so we still have I think there's some conditions on the y function. I think maybe there's a special limit we use. Let's see. This term is supposed to disappear. And I need to figure out. Maybe I gave you a special limit. So that would work if we knew y of x was a polynomial, or always less than or equal to some polynomial. Um, The, the ODE is, but we don't know about the solution, uh, the solution which is why. All right, so I'm not sure why that first <coughs> term disappears, but uh, the second term is negative y of 0. Well, let's just leave it as, uh, leave it with the limit here. 
So I'll use the letter B that I used before. So it's limit B approaches infinity, Y, B, E to the negative S, B. So that's limb B approaches infinity, Y, B, E negative S, B. Uh, e to the zero is one, so it's minus Y naught, and then plus S times L of Y. So they just assume the limit zero? Yeah. Perfect. Fantastic. All right. I was about to do that anyways. <laughs> All right. So there's, they just assume that the solution y, uh, it doesn't get bigger than e to the negative sb, basically. So that is just zero by assumption. Otherwise, it gives a reference to a book written in 1961. Well, that was only seven years before that book was written, yeah. so that's very reasonable. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this one approaches zero, um, which is basically off the, you know that something about the solution is going to uh, look a lot like an exponential uh, or something smaller. <coughs> All right, so now we're going to fix the, let's see. All this is a, definitely a mess right now. We'll clean it up at the end and write the general yeah, form. I'm still practicing because I was like, I don't have room to the right. I don't even know where you're going. Don't worry. This is a mess that I clean up, not you. Sweet. All right. So let's see where in the world. So I don't need that right there anymore. And now I'm still going to do the same thing here. Zero to infinity. All right, next line. So we got limit b approaches infinity y prime of b e negative s b minus. Now I'm going to plug in zero. So that's a y prime of zero. Wait, did we just do this? No. So y prime of zero plus s. Now L of y prime somewhere up here. L of y prime is this line right above, which is negative y of zero plus s L of y. So I'm going to use that L of y prime right here. So it's s times negative y of zero plus S L of Y. So again, that first limit we're assuming is zero right there. I'm just distributing S. <coughs> okay. So I could go to k equals 3, or we can try to guess the pattern right now. So I already know the pattern. Just guess. So let's look and see what's going on. All right. If we went up one more degree, you know what, let's write all three results together, and then maybe the pattern will be more obvious. So we got k is 0, gave us something. We never really, I do need to take that limit when k is 0. I started to and didn't finish it. All right, so we got lim b approaches infinity. Well, we don't know what this is. Nope. So there's not much you can do for L of y, so we'll just write L y prime. So I'm going to use on the right negative y of 0 plus sl of y. k equals 2. 
ly double prime was negative y prime of 0 plus s y of 0 plus s squared l of y. All right, so what do you think the last term is going to be? Just look at the first, uh, the last term of the first two. What would be the next term? S cubed. S cubed. Mm -hmm. So that should be pretty easy to see. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's figure out what in the world's going on everywhere else. So let's look at the first term. What do you think the next first term would be? It's obviously negative. Why double prime of zero? You're thinking too much. Now we have a problem because <coughs> if I start circling things that we accomplished, there's a different number of terms each time. So the first time around we had two terms and then three terms. How many times will we how many terms will we have the next four? Four. Alright. So there's two terms missing. We need to think about what they are. Now we have to look at how the terms relate to each other. What happens to the powers of s as you move one term to the right? They increase. They increase by one. So that's the first thing. And all the terms without L in them are negative. So there's going to be a negative term and then another negative term. So we're just going to fill in the blanks here. That's all we need to do. There's two terms missing. All right, take your best guess at what they are. I'm going to give you 20 seconds to guess. The pattern is somewhat obvious, but not that obvious. There's powers of S's and derivatives. Yep, so basically we're getting one more s each time we move over and one more, one less derivative every time we move over. That's kind of tricky to see. I think if we did k equals 3 that would be painfully obvious, but that would also take a while, a while longer. So we're going to get negative s y single prime of 0 and then negative s squared y no derivatives of 0. All right, so that is the pattern. So we're ready to write the nth term out. So we'll do k equals k. Let's write the positive term first. So what would the positive L of Y, what coefficient would be in front of L of Y? S to, so it'd be S to K. Now I'm going to subtract all the rest, all the rest of the terms are negative, so we'll just factor the negative sign out. And now we have to write the general pattern. What is the highest derivative term we're going to see? Well, there's no n here. Well, I mean, to the n power, usually when you're talking about very big yeah, numbers. So it'll be, if you look right here, you can see on either line, it's basically one less derivative than you started with. So we started with k, so it'll be k minus 1. So this is y to the k minus 1 derivative of 0. Uh, <clears throat> the highest derivative has no coefficient in front of it. So it's just, uh, there's no s's in front. Next up, there's going to be an s, and the derivative drops by 1. So it's y k minus 2 derivative of 0 plus s squared y k minus 3 plus dot 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 plus we have to be careful. We're going to get s. I 
I think it's k minus 1 y of 0. So that's the pattern. I'm going to write some notes in this. I'll go purple for notes. So I could put an S0 in front so that we can see the S pattern happening, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., like that. Uh, here's one way you can check. Better put a first power. What do you get when you add up the powers? Add up those numbers I've circled. What do you get every time? K minus 1. No matter which one you look at. A 0 plus k minus 1, 1 plus k minus 2, 2 plus k minus 3, and k minus 1 plus 0. They're all k minus 1. So you could write something super fancy. I'll write one summation here and then I'll erase it because you probably won't like it. So it looks like s to the m y would be k minus m We'll just do y to the k. Use K. All right, so what I just rewrote there was a summation to represent all these, and I wrote it with a really weird condition underneath. So that says you're summing up all the terms such that m plus n plus 1 equals k. So basically you're writing it as uh, it's all m and n with this property right here. So I'll erase that, don't worry. We don't, I think it's probably the first time I've written a sum like that, but that's instead of starting at something and ending at something, you can say add up everything that has this property. So it's an alternative way to write the index for a summation. All right, so this is L of Y to the K. So we're going to rewrite whatever I put an asterisk next to, which I think is right here. So I'm going to rewrite this using uh, what we just wrote down. So basically what we did was we figured that guy out. So I'm going to take the uh, what we just wrote down and put it in for that. So it was summation k equals zero to n. A k. L of y k derivative equals L of f. <coughs> so what we're going to do is now swap out L of y k derivative. All right, so what we're about to have is a sum of sums. So I'll write it out as a, well, if I'm going to write it as a sum of sums, I better write, no, I'm not going to use double summation notation. So what I'm going to do is write one, uh, 1k index on each row, basically. So I'm going to write it as a, a sum like you did if you're adding when you just learned how to add and you added 10 things in a row vertically. So I'm going to write out a sum like that. So we'll start with the uh, highest power, which is n. So I am just copying this right out of the notes. So I'll write this line down, then we'll make sure it's correct, and then I'll write the next line down.
So that should be what we get when k equals n, right there. So what is in the parentheses should exactly correspond to what we got up here, where k equals n. So that's the nth uh, order, the nth degree term right there. So now what I'm going to do is the n minus first. So we're going to drop down one value for n each row that I go down. So our next one is an minus 1, sn minus 1, l of y minus an minus 1. Oh, and I am bringing out the sklY term is going to be at, out the front. So it doesn't really fit the rest of the pattern because it has the l of y on it. y and minus 2 of 0 plus s y and minus 3 of 0 plus s and minus 3 y prime of 0 plus s and minus 2 y of 0. Alright, so our first one was k equals n. The next one was k equals n minus 1. Of course, we're adding these together. So now is where we go dot, dot, dot. So this is the k equals n minus 2, 3, n minus 3, n minus 4, etc. And we'll go down to uh, k equals 1. So we got a2, s2, l of y, or a2, s squared, l of y, minus a2 times y prime of 0 plus s y of 0 plus a1, s, l of y minus a1, y of 0 plus a0 L of Y and of course all this equals L of F alright so that's probably the most serious equation you've seen in your life I say serious one because it has a lot of terms but also each term a lot of the terms are pretty complicated so we're gonna rearrange the top side and the way we're going to do it, I want to group up all the LOYs. So this is going to require a large amount of algebra, which I'm basically going to skip over. So I'm going to rearrange things so that my L of Y terms, right now each L of Y is kind of on its own row. I'm going to group all the LOY terms together. And then after that, we're going to group out the other terms by, we'll look for Y prime of 0 y prime of 0, we'll group all the y prime of zeros together, the y of zeros, the y double primes of zeros, so we're going to regroup things quite differently. So our first term, and if you look where these came from, you're basically adding up the first terms right here. So I just put a yellow box around it. So if we go uh, highest degree to lowest degree, oops, I think I didn't scroll up high enough. Yep. And there's another term that I completely left out. And that term at the top. 
All right, so add up all those together, you get that huge coefficient that I have right there. Next up, we're going to do the y of zero terms, and they're all negative. So all of this is Laplace transformation still? Yeah. This is gross. So this is this is the easy formula you're going to be using that we're writing down now. Uh -huh. All right, a n s n minus one plus a n minus one s n minus two plus a two s plus a one times y of zero and <coughs> That grouped up what would be basically the last term. I have to zoom this way out. It basically groups up the very last term out of each parentheses above. So it's probably a good time to go dot, 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 minus. You know, I'll go one more and then I'll write dot, dot, dot. So this is an s n minus 2 plus a n minus 1, s n minus 3, plus a 3 s plus a 2 y prime of 0. And so now we'll go dot 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 down to a n s plus a n minus 1, y n minus 2 derivative of 0, minus a n y n minus 1 derivative of 0. All of this equals still L of f. We didn't change the right side of the equation at all. So in your book, this is 27.41, in case I had made a mistake on one of the superscripts or subscripts. Hopefully I didn't. So <clears throat> before we did any of this Laplace stuff, transformations, all that good stuff, what would you have called yk of 0 like a month ago? Well, it's a derivative of a function where we plug in a value. What did we call these before? If your, fun if your ODE was degree n, you usually got n of these. These are all initial conditions are what these are. So yk to the n are uh, initial conditions, which means they're going to be numbers. You're going to plug in the values. Then solve for L of y. Then find L inverse of L of Y, which will equal Y. And you can use a table on uh, page 306. So that tells you how to, we computed Laplace transform of the X function, but it computes, I think, eight or so other Laplace transforms of some common functions. Actually, it's probably more than 8. 11. So there's a, and it, it has the x function that we got, I think it was s squared. Hopefully it has that. Should be one of the first ones. Well, we did, we computed one of those off that table. I think it was last note section. Where we did one of these. Here we go. 
So we got one of these transformations that we computed, L of the X function was one over S squared. So we computed one, you can compute them, but I recommend you just use the table that's in your book. Some of them are actually really tough to compute, some of them are very easy to compute. Just x. Should turn into 1 over s squared. Oh, yeah. It should be like one of the first three. It's, it's really weird how it labels it though. It says if f of x is equal to x to the n, then l of x is uh, n factorial over x to the n. So it's way more general than, yeah. Yeah, than we needed. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and do an example. Actually, let's do, let's do one example of a Laplace computation, just an easy transformation computation before we actually solve an ODE. So we're going to compute L of 0, which is integral 0 to infinity. Uh, so you have a definition in your notes, it's a Laplace transform. I'll write over here. It's integral 0 to infinity, e negative sx, fx, dx. Yep. And it will be a function of s. Your x's will disappear. So we did, we computed L of x before. All right, what is e to negative sx times zero? Zero. So what is the integral of zero from anywhere to anywhere? Zero. So that means L of zero is equal to zero. Uh, previously, we computed L of x is 1 over s squared. And L is linear. So if you got L of alpha x, that's alpha times L of x. That's a linear property right there. You can bring the alpha outside. And this will be alpha times 1 over s squared, or alpha over s squared. Now we're going to actually solve an ODE using Laplace transform. Can you solve this ODE in another way? Yes. Oh yeah. This is a particularly easy first order. Not trivial, but not very hard. Probably e to the 2x, something like that, or e to the half x will probably be one solution. It looks like y equals 0 is another non-exciting solution. But we can solve this other ways. Uh, we're not going to, though. We're going to solve it using Laplace transforms. So we need that crazy formula I put a box around. However, what is, let's see, what is n in our example? n is 1. That makes things a lot simpler. So n is 1. So that means we're only going to have two terms total. So an n is 1. Now, if, if you go past this, somewhere up here, we don't have an a2. We're going to have an a1 and a0. So anything that has a2 doesn't make any sense. So we're only using the first two rows. So I'm just going to rewrite those first two. And our n is 1, so I'm going to write it as a1s plus a0 
y to the 1 minus, uh-oh, y to the 1 minus 2. That's not good. Y to the negative first derivative of 0. Oh, wow. All right, so this derivative would be a negative first right there. That should not be happening. So we're actually only going to use the first row. And no matter what, you get the top row as well. You always get the top row. So we're going to have the top row and the last row. All right, so I'll write it just with the top row and the last row. So it'll be A1S to the first power plus A0 L of Y minus A1S times Y0 equals L of F. So that's the first row and the last row when N equals 1. Hopefully if you read carefully with N equals 1, you can see that happening. All right, what is A0 and A1? Yep, they were the coefficients for the original terms. I'm probably looking at the wrong spot. No, nope. we'll go way to the top. The original ODE is right here. They're the coefficients of the derivatives of y, basically. So a0 is the zero derivative coefficient. a1 is the first derivative coefficient. Which I think are like 1 and 2, something easy like that. So a0 is 2. And A1 is the one I just wrote. So that's A0, that's A1, right there. So we got 1S plus 2 uh, L of Y minus A1 is 1, so it's just S. I also need to know y of 0. We need an initial condition. So, not L of 0, I need y of 0. Uh, we'll take y of 0 to be 2 here. So that 2 goes in for y of 0. Uh, what is our f function? So f is the function on the right side here. So f is 0, so it's L of 0, which we just computed to be 0. So we got s plus 2 L of y minus 2s equals 0. All right, what are we supposed to be solving for? Somewhere I wrote some instructions. Almost. So we plugged in initial conditions, all the values that we could. I'm going to read at the very top of the board. Um, Step two, solve for L of Y. Algebraically easy to do. Just subtract or add 2S to the other side and then divide by S plus 2. So we have 2S over S plus 2. So that was easy algebra. All right, what's the last step that's not on the board anymore? We got to solve for y. So how do we get y by itself? So we need to move the L operator to the other side, so we move it as the inverse operator. So we're going L inverse on both sides of this equation. So L inverse of L of y cancels out to y. L is a linear operator, which lets me bring the 2 out front. So we got 2 L inverse of S over S plus 2. So anybody else have their textbook? 
got one textbook. I do have a copy of this right on the Canvas site you can find. What page are we on? That table? Uh, this example is on page 300 now. Although the example started on page 299. I mean the uh, table, sorry. The table is on page 306. All right, so this yeah. table. Uh, <coughs> All right. So what you're looking for is the S function, which is going to be in the right column. So which, on the right side, which case do we have? S over S plus a number. So we got S over S squared plus a number. So we're on the bottom one right there. Any questions on that? What number is, so we're looking at a squared. What number, what do we have for a squared? Two. Two. So a is square root two. So we have s over s squared plus a squared. So I'm just going to write that line of the table out. I'll go in blue here. Uh, oh. Yes, good catch. So yeah, we don't have s squared, so we are... A 1 over s minus a. Just the middle one. Oh, not the middle one anymore. Let's see. Oh. But didn't we have an s on top, too? Let's just erase it. Man. There isn't a, a second table in there. Yeah, we shouldn't have an S in the numerator, according to my notes here. Ooh, I think I see what we did wrong. All right, what power should this S be raised to? should be raised to the zero power. So it should just be a one right there, which means we just have minus two. So we just have two, two, one. All right, that I think is the exact one that you guys were looking at, which is now at the top of the board right there. What is our a value? Oh. Yeah. Two and negative two. Let's see. It'll be negative two. So L inverse. That was e to the. N e to the ax is our inverse. And of course, a is negative 2, so we get e to the negative 2x, which, by the way, is what I guessed originally, but I gave you an intentionally easy problem so that we wouldn't get bogged down in all the details. So we'll do a less trivial example next, where, let's see, we'll do a degree 2, so it'll be a little bit more tricky. Are you going to also then homework? Oh, we should get, yeah, that, that too. There we go. Like that? Yeah. All right, why do we no have no plus constant? There's a very specific reason why we have no constant. So we would have had one, but this solution method requires initial conditions. So you should not be expecting a constant at the end because you're supposed to, in order for this to work, you need n initial conditions. So you should have no constants after you're done. 